So how can you go from shooting 82, 11 over par, to one under in one week? That is what this Quest for the Open video is gonna be all about, my new secret weapon. Hey everybody, Peter Finch here, and the first thing that I want to say is I hope you're all well and I hope you are all safe. Just wanted to say a massive thank you for spending your time on this channel with me watching my content. It's also crazy to think that I'm closing in on 300,000 subscribers, so I just wanted to say a massive thank you for actually being a subscriber to the channel. You know, it's a wonderful privilege to have you along for this ride, to have you watch the stuff, and for you to be interested in what I'm doing and the Quest for the Open as well. Really, really appreciate it. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. It would help us get over that 300K threshold. Now, this video also contains a bit of a giveaway, but I'm gonna leave the announcement for that until later on in the vid. I think it needs explaining and for you to understand the backstory about why I think this is a brilliant giveaway. But the first stage of that giveaway is to wallop that like button. I'm also gonna warn you now, I'm not done the edit yet, but I think this is gonna be a fairly long video. So get yourself a drink, settle into your armchair or your settee, or if you're watching this in bed or on the, and if you take on board what I said in this video, you are gonna improve at your golf. There's no doubt about that. An almost cast iron guarantee with absolutely no guarantee. So first of all, let me set the scene. Last week during the British Masters qualifying, I had an 11 on one hole. Incredibly embarrassing. And to be honest, I was a little bit upset. However, the incident, as it will now be known, highlighted something which I've avoided for quite some time. My mental game is trash. Just. Just garbage. I'm a golf coach with decent coaching credentials and I'm also a qualified mind factor coach. Generally, I know what I'm doing. And that's what the Quest for the Open series is all about, where I'm forced into a situation where I've got to try and practice what I preach. So after the incident, I contacted Lee Crombleholm, who's a golf and a sports psychologist, to help me try and understand what I'm missing within my own mental game and how I can improve and shoot better scores. We've also recorded a Rough Cut podcast, which again has loads and loads of information in. If you haven't checked it out, make sure you type in Rough Cut Golf Podcast into your favorite podcast provider and it'll come up. So Lee works with European tour pros, PGA tour pros, rider cuppers, and everyday regular golfers as well. You know, he knows his stuff. Here is the chat we had about the quest for the Open and what I need to do within my own game. Right, Lee, thanks for coming on the uh, quest for the Open video, but let's um, let's have a little bit of a talk, shall we? I'm gonna need, a, I'm gonna need one of your broad shoulders to, to weep into incessantly um, for a short amount of time. <laughs> my, my general problem just, thinking clearly on the course and actually playing playing the golf which it sounds like a very very terrible cliche and it's something that you probably hear all the time but i know during my practice rounds and certainly when i'm filming the standard of golf which i can play is so far and above what i'm able to produce in competition when you went into into the competitive round at close house what were your goals what was it, what were you trying to achieve what were you what were you trying to focus on? So I put a score in my head at two under is what, I, is what I wanted to try and get. So in this video here, Lee's actually pointing to a little diagram that he drew. And on the two sides of the arrows is mastery and ego. Now you can split this up into a mastery and an ego approach to golf. So this is what Lee says. So mastery is very much about the process and appreciating the nuances of the game and learning and confidence is more stable as a result. Ego is more about the outcome, result or score and how it makes you feel to win or lose. And confidence here is generally gonna be more unstable because your whole performance is wrapped up in simply the results. And this is something which I really, really fell into the trap of. You know, everything about my golf is all results driven rather than the process that if you go through and you're diligent and you're really focused on simply improving as a golfer and loving golf, the results are gonna take care of themselves. That was my real goal, so it was a, it was a score goal. And apart from that, it was to try and get 26 putts or less, which would have been a benchmark to set against the practice I've been doing. What, what score were you on when you made your 11? Um, I was three over and I'd had my usual start to a competition. So pretty shaky, pretty nervy, just a bit scrappy. Just birded the par five 10th, then got on the 11th and 
the rest is <laughs> the rest is history. Just looking at those those kind of first few holes where you know you you've, you've picked an ego goal, um, an outcome goal, a, a result focused goal. How how do you go about the process before hitting a shot? Then what's you know obviously you, you kind of think about where you want to play your next shot from, but then. As you go into the shot, what kind of things are going on? Do you have a, is there a feel that you, you kind of try and work through or is a, which is a physical mm -hmm. or is there a kind of simple mental pre-shot routine? Certainly within the competition I've played so far, I've noticed that it is very much physical. You know, my, my visualization of shots is, is almost non-existent. Someone that would be in that situation, a kind of typical situation where I would say, you know, they've not worked on their mental game. They would, they would kind of lean towards a, a physical routine. But one of the things that I, I get players to do is ask really good questions. And it's such a simple thing to do. You've got to ask the right kind of questions. So on a tee shot, rather than standing there behind the ball and going, right, okay, I'm going to start the ball on that target there and I'm going to let it drift with a slight fade and, and land there. That's that's more of a statement, isn't it? You know, I'm going to start it there and I'm going to finish it there. That's That, that would be constructed as a statement rather than a question. Yeah, yeah. When we're doing that, we're actually in the conscious mind. Now, the conscious mind is very much the slowest part of the brain. So we don't want to be in there. It might be like trying to load up um, the full Microsoft Office suite on a ZX81. So we need to keep, we need to try and do our best to keep out of the conscious mind because we want to be playing more subconsciously. Simplest of mental pre-shot routines would keep asking yourself questions. Now, statement versus questions. This is something so simple and so beautiful. I mean, a statement like, I will hit a draw here versus what does a lovely draw look like? Or how does my body feel when trying to hit a draw? The questions fire the brain into life while the statement, it just kind of cows it into submission. And it's almost like you need to do this. But those questions really start to send messages to the body about what you want it to do, how you can imagine that shot. If you can see the shot before you hit it, the likelihood of you actually achieving it is so, so much more likely. Probably hit the nail on the head. I don't think I'm asking myself any questions apart from after. Why did you do that? <laughs> well, what What are you doing? Yeah, it's quite a unique event in in some respects. That whole uh, closed house because you know I've never I've never had an eleven in a competition before. I, I can't remember the, I can't remember any time I've got into double figures on a on a golf hole before. So it's it's something that doesn't happen very often. But like halfway through it, I started to think and be like, you know what? How is this actually going to play out on a video? Like, what are people I, what are people going to say? I when I actually upload this, it, it was it was quite it was quite visceral. Like it was pretty pretty intense. Oh, questions. You're asking questions there, but you know that the answers are, are powerful in the wrong. Yeah, way. yeah. You know, so that I, I say, you know, effective questions. They're ineffective questions, aren't they? They're like polar opposite. Mm. From a from a, a complete attitude point of view, and it's like, okay, well, I'm just gonna I'm gonna tap into these three things. I'm gonna something along the lines of, I'm gonna ask really good questions. I'm gonna use quiet eye, yeah, mm. focus my eyes on a point on the ball. Quiet eye. Now this is an absolute baller of an idea. Now during the last week and the practice that I've done, I would recommend starting on putting using this quiet eye. Now I use the picks balls with a Ricky Fowler pattern on the TP5. And whilst putting during the comp, I basically turned the ball over so the dark picks pattern actually faced directly up. So I didn't use the line. I then focused all my energy on that spot. So I was just staring at that spot almost with an intensity that I've never had before. And for the longest time, I've tried to keep my mind clear and to keep it calm whenever I'm playing. And, and this tactic managed to quiet my mind more than anything I've tried before. And give it a go, it, you'd be amazed at how something so simple, just staring at a spot on the ball, clears your mind completely of technical thoughts and the worries that might be creeping in there. You know, yeah, you want to be competitive, but like you said, you know, you, it's your second competitive round, you know, since lockdown finished. You know, it's going to be much easier to, to control those controllables and look after those processes than it is to shoot two under and to have 26 putts. Most of my golf, maybe because of kind of with the videos and maybe that side of things, I'm very much, very much over to the ego side. I think with 
pretty much everything there. Most most players are because the game of golf wants to constantly drag you over that way. Not often they're going to get totally mastery, but at least there's some kind of balance there. And that, that's where they would find a consistency. So on with the knowledge, I went out to the golf course to try and work on these things. Now I did a little bit of technical work, but generally I was just focusing on these mental changes. So out on the course, I basically asked myself before every single shot, what does a perfect shot look like? Or what do I want this shot to look like? I really focused on the quiet eye technique, just really picking out a spot on the ball again and using those picks patterns to just quiet the mind down. Another thing I did was try to keep my eye level above the flag. Now, what this did, it basically completely altered my posture, stopped my eyes staring down the ground, stopped me chuntering and thinking. Just drew myself up to my full height. Now, during practice, I found this really difficult to do, especially switching off from a technical and ego-led approach to more of a mastery one, but I persevered. Now, on the comp day, I woke up early and I had a pretty terrible night's sleep, to be honest, but I walked to the golf course. My car's still in the garage after my uh, incident with a deer, but I only live half an hour walk from Withington Golf Club, so, so I put the bag onto the motor caddy and walked down there. The stairs that you get, by the way, kind of walking through streets with golf clubs, it's like people have never seen golf clubs before. Or maybe someone holding GoPro, kind of walking. Maybe that was why. So did some drills on the putting green, just working on orientation using a tee track. Then some distance drills, but nothing too intense. I was only there maybe 40 minutes before my tee time. Hit a few balls in the net, just trying to focus and visualize that first tee shot as well. It's a slightly tricky one at Whittington, kind of par through. But here are my stats, let me talk you through them and then some of the stuff that happened on the course. I would do if my computer ran just shut down. I'm using this shot scope V3 just to test it out and the, the stats don't use strokes gain, which is not ideal, but greens and reg 83%. It doesn't tell the story about how well I put it from long distance. My long distance put in at Withington was probably the best it's ever been. So the work I've put in technically on that, big thumbs up. I was generally really good around the green, so very, very happy with that. Uh, one under going out and then level coming back in. But I hold out really, really well from short distance. My long putting was fantastic as well. And I hold some good birdie putts as well. There's only maybe two putts out there, which I didn't get settled over and I didn't give myself the best chance of holding. You see a lot of my approach shots here were finishing short, but what Withington did during the competition, they actually put a lot of the pins at the back of the green. So I was pretty wary about going long on a lot of shots. So I managed to stay really composed and really in the zone as far as the things I was working on until the 15th and then at three under par I started to think well you know if you get a couple more you could win and then the score started to creep into my head and the last three holes at Winnington are pretty tough as well and I actually had a really scrappy finish and in the end I finished in fourth winner being five under so even if I'd have parred out from the 15th I'd have finished in second so I still wouldn't have won but that turnaround from how I was feeling playing and performing last week to this week just by getting my mental game in a better order is pretty remarkable. And I'm so happy that Lee agreed to help out. I'm so happy that a lot of you guys actually pushed me to do this as well. And because I've done it with every other part of my game, you know, I've got coaching, even though I am a coach, I've let go of that ego in lieu of a better word. And I'm hoping now that if I can continue to work on this over the next few weeks, I've got about three comps within the next three weeks, no, four comps within the next four weeks, then hopefully we can edge ever closer to getting that first pro win. Now for the giveaway, Lee has agreed to give away a coaching session. Now you can either do this in person at Highly where he's based, or you can do it like I did over a Zoom call. So you should have already liked the video, already be a subscriber. Now what you've got to do is just get into those comments below. Let me know a mental tip or a psychological trick which has helped you out on the golf course, and then get over to Lee's website. It's www.winninggolfmind.com forward slash competition. You've got to enter before the 31st of July, 2020. And obviously it doesn't matter where you're based, you know, you can do this from anywhere in the world. And what Lee did in that very short session that we had, I'm absolutely sure that you getting coached by a European tour winning coach and someone who really knows his stuff is going to be of a massive benefit. A massive thank you for Lee for coming on the channel. Big thank you for you guys as watching as well. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Let me know what you think about the quest for the open and everything that you've seen in this video. Very, very excited to get out and play once more now. Amazing how quickly golf can turn around. <laughs> right guys, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.